Hello everyone on YouTube, Spark here and in this video I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can make a forward dash attack as you might have seen in games like Strongest Battlegrounds, Z Battlegrounds and many more. So of course in order to make a proper forward dash attack you're gonna need a dash system in place. I've already made a video on how you can do that. Go check it out, the link will also be in the description. So once you've done that, then come back to this video. So this region of code here where it says enum.keycode.w is where the forward dash happens so this is where we'll be doing our client side stuff but before all that of course we're gonna need an animation for a dash tag I have this dummy right here with an animation which I'll be using another thing I want to mention for the animation whichever animation you're using is that it needs to have a marker I've named this marker hit we're gonna need this marker later on so first let's export that say Roblox copy the ID I already have a folder for my animations I'm gonna put it in dashes so that's in place now we need to add it in this animation table as well this is where the dash animations are stored okay so that's the animation all done so as you can see on this line we wait for the forward dash animation to stop so once it's stopped that's when we want the dash attack to happen so what we're gonna do here is just play the animation so great the animation will play as soon as the forward dash ends now we're gonna add an empty variable here named connection So the code that's in here will run when the animation reaches the hit marker which we created earlier. Now again we're gonna need to go into replicate storage then create a folder named remotes. I've already made one. Add a remote event there. name it anything you want I'm gonna name it dash attack and then we're gonna add it to our code local dash remote now basically we will be using this remote in order to communicate with the server so that's client and server the client is you obviously the player the server is what's providing you the game services and everything so we want the hitbox and stuff to be cast on the server side which basically means that the hitbox will be there for everyone else as well so, uh, so that's everyone else that's in your game if we do all that on the client side it will only happen for you the user so since we want the dash tag to harm our, our opponent we will of course need a remote event to communicate with the server and cast the hitbox here so that's our client side done almost now we're gonna go to the server side Okay, so on the client side we played the dash animation and when it reached the hit marker we fired a signal to the server through the dash attack remote 
when it gets the signal the player is automatically passed to the server so that's you the user so from there we can get our character our humanoid our humanoid root part we'll be needing these three things and here I've defined parameters so this is what we'll be using to cast our hitboxes here I've set the filter type to exclude and I've added our character to this table so this basically means that when the hitbox is cast it will ignore our own character so now we will actually cast the hitbox So here we've actually cast the hitbox in workspace. This here is the position of our hitbox. It's in front of our character. This is the size of our hitbox and here I've passed the overlap params. So if parts in box means if the hitbox is casted, which it is then it will run a for loop so basically loop through everything that has been detected in the hitbox if its name is humanoid root part so basically every other character it just like your own character will have this in them so if it's detected then we're gonna put the root part of our opponent in this variable right here as well as their humanoid so that we can actually damage So once again right here we excluded our own character from the hitbox so which means this humanoid root part can only be our opponent's humanoid root part not our own so we don't have to worry about that there's actually a small mistake here this is supposed to be v.parent find first child humanoid Now let's test it out. As you can see, the dummy took some damage. So the dash attack works. So obviously there's stuff missing from this dash attack like effects, sound effects, and stun and lag. So for all that I'm gonna make a part 2 in which this dash attack will be complete so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial I hope you guys learned something make sure to leave your ideas in the comments below leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one